gekommen und es sprach doch so viel dagegen. Wir waren viel zu verlegen, du und ich, aber ich umso mehr, umso mehr. Today in this second episode in English of my podcast Salon Holofernes, I shall be talking to one of my closest friends yet again. This time I am talking to Taitur, a wonderful songwriter from the Faroe Islands, which is a tiny group of islands that he will kindly put on the map for you during our little chat. But Taitur isn't only my most inspiring artist friend, he is also I think one of the best people to talk to about songwriting because he's exceptionally articulate when it comes to explaining what he does and why. Yes, also we wrote a lot of songs together and he's been my main collaborator over the last, I think, four years, five years since we've known each other and Because I've seen him up close, I can say that he is probably a bona fide genius. And I will try not to say that when I talk to him, so as not to make him uncomfortable. But I think it's important that you know. So enjoy. It's so good to see you. You too. Are, are you in your studio or upstairs? Uh, no, I'm. Uh, I'm in. Uh, I'm in Den in Copenhagen actually. Oh, you are. I am in Copenhagen. Yeah, I'm doing these drive-in shows. Uh, there's a drive-in tour in Denmark now, and I'm on it. That's it's so really, cool. It's really bizarre. How many have you done? Uh, I just done one. I mean, I did two on the Pharaohs that I sort of organized myself. And now I've got myself into this thing in Denmark where it's uh, it's five shows. And uh, yeah, it's it's a Live Nation thing. They just put up a st big stage and then they have several shows, you know, coming in. Is it fun or is it like mostly weird? It's all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I think for everybody, also for the people who are there, it's 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 weird and awkward, um, but but uh, also nice because you want to go out and hear music, you know. So so it's 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 nice. But this gig was strange because it, it was super windy and it's one of those things. And and you're uh, I was on this big big screen so everyone can see you, but you and I couldn't hear a thing because it was just this noise coming from uh, from the, all the wind in this big uh, big stage. And uh, and it was raining too, and the, <laughs> and the stage was like you could literally play a football game on that stage, and it was just me, you know, standing there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, you're being filmed too, and you have to like play really well. It was really, it was kind of strange, but but I think in inside the car they used the FM, you know, they used the, the signal yeah. for the radio, so so it sounds much different than you think when you're playing. But but, but like, I, I do you hear to, anything? Do you like hear any, no applause, no nothing? Nothing. I had a, they put a screen in front of me with like eight faces with like people like eating chips and, <laughs> and, and watching. But that was kind of nice because then I could at least see some people. And I managed to have a conversation at one point with, uh, with one car that they had microphones or something. So, <laughs> so we, we were talking. <laughs> but it, it was kind of fun it was very 2020 i think yeah it's kind of for <laughs> the history books right i mean yeah <laughs> like how how long yeah. have you been isolated before like you had those two weeks where you like really couldn't leave the house yeah right? i that was straight i was i was in germany you know i was on the way to see you guys and i was i was uh, had to to uh flee the border basically because they were closing the borders so I, I drove back with the rental car and uh, got in the airport the next day. I was kind of lucky. Everything was really smooth. So And then, and then I was in quarantine for, uh, yeah, uh, two weeks. Uh, and then I've just been on the Pharaohs uh, ever since. So this is so, the first time you, like, for how long have you been allowed to leave the country? Uh, just recently. Well, I think, no, I think you could actually leave the country. 
I think you could have, but it was just like one plane a week or something like, and it was, you did not want to do that. You know, why would you leave? You know, it was, it was, it seemed like a, a bad idea to go anywhere. Like even going to yeah. Denmark would be like, Oh, why? Yeah. Cause everything is closed down and it, it, it just, it seemed like the best thing is just to stay at home. And, um, and that we did. And uh, Insula and uh, my wife has been, she's been, uh, been working. So okay, uh, I've been, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, but also going out to meetings and so on. They have, they have um, meetings where they <laughs> keeping a distance and everything. It's really, <laughs> really strange. That's so weird. But yeah. like, how, how are you holding up or how were you? Like, were you really, really disappointed to drop the tour and... I think I was just like perfectly uh, in denial of everything. Like I can be in these kinds of things, you know, I was like, Oh, this is fine. And, but actually I'm, you know, there's like little pieces of me that are being picked out of my heart right this very moment. <laughs> but oh, I'm God. just, but I'm just in denial, I think. But uh, no, I, in a way I've also enjoyed the sort of pause thing and, and um, enjoyed that we are lucky that it isn't so bad for us that it's, it's um uh, we're in good hands and everything that everybody that we know, like everything seems, seems okay. Nobody is really, I mean, people lost money, that kind of thing, but no one is, is really hurting, hurting. It seems, it seems everyone's like getting by. Yeah. Same here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, we haven't, I mean, I, it's scary and everything and it's weird mm. with the kids and I mean it hasn't been easy but on the other side I really enjoy like the forced simplicity of things you know sure. the I don't know oh wait oh wait oh no I turned the microphone the wrong way so now you're gonna get improved audio <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's been facing the other way oh that's a much better signal okay okay there good we well we should be fine I think mm -hmm. should we, I mean, this is going to be like, I think part um, telling people who don't really know about you, who you are and what you do, but sure. like for the most part, it's going to be like a masterclass and we can totally nerd off. Okay. You know, because it's, cool. I mean, I'm talking to artists of all different trades and we're talking about how they work and how okay. creativity works. And so it's really mm -hmm. nerdy and. Um, okay. But maybe like just to set the scene. So um, could you tell people where you actually live when you're not in Copenhagen and how that has been in during the lockdown and everything? Yeah, well, I live in the Faroe Islands, uh, uh, which is um, basically if you if you imagine England and Scotland, the continuance of the the isles that are up there. If you take the northern part of England, you have the Orkney Islands and then the Shetlands and then the Faroe Islands. So it's this the last sort of group of islands in, in the Atlantic, right between Iceland and, and Norway. That's where we live. And that's where I grew up, uh, as you know, and um, you've been there too. Yeah, uh, it's, but that, it's but that, so beautiful. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's where we live. And it's, 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 uh, very, it's one of the smallest countries in the world. Only 50,000 people live there. Uh, and and uh, we have our own sort of community going on with our own language and our own culture and It's it's a it's a really great place to be actually, uh, and it's uh, it's interesting times there, but that's where we've been during the <clears throat> lockdown. And everyone is, is it seems to me that everyone is saying that oh it must be so nice to be in the Faroe Islands during during the lockdown, but the truth is that it's uh, I think it's uh, it's as as bad as uh, as most places because um, yeah everything was is is COVID and Corona and then you can't do anything you're locked at home. And after after a while, it, it I think it gets the same for everybody in a way. Frustration. I But, mean, uh, I think it must be easier to isolate because there is like barely any people. I mean, when I when I yeah. got there, I was like, "Where is everybody?" <laughs> and, and you said, yeah. "This is everybody." Like, yeah. But that's it. Like my, my wife is saying that, that I, I can't tell the difference because I'm always just at home anyway and not going out. Like I'm, I'm such an introvert that I don't really go out so much. So, so for me, it's been like staying at home with uh, some changes on the internet, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for uh, us, it's weird because outside is so different from inside. Like mm -hmm. I'm pretty 
good at isolating myself and kind of uh, focusing on my introvert aspects. Yeah. But once you leave the house, it's just crazy. There's like a Volksfest going on, you know? Yeah. There's yeah. just so many people in the streets and you have to zigzag <laughs> and, you know, like get it's so out strange, of everybody's that. way. It's really weird. That's so strange. I think it, there's definitely that that we're forgetting it, uh, you know, that you're going somewhere and then, oh, right, there's there's Corona. Like that has happened to me many times, like especially now when I come to Copenhagen, you really forget it because uh, it's mainly in, in the mind, you know? The, yeah, it is. The thing. It is. Unless, mm. like, you catch it. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah. can you... Yeah. Because I think... Um, Maybe maybe you can tell people your history of living on the Faroes and then not, and then going back, because I think that's really interesting for your like artistic yeah. voyage. Yeah, I think that that um, my sort of background or my drive to make music and to create was very much this uh, coming from a small place, like the provincial kid, you know, mm. who, who um, you grow up there, and um, and there's the frustration that. Why don't we have um, music venues? Why can't I go out to hear other bands? Why can't I make this music? Uh, there was always cover music. Like we, when I grew up, there was always uh, just cover bands and zero self confidence in in you can make your own music. And my sort of generation or, or our group of friends, we were all let's let's go make it ourselves uh, and and sort of change that. Uh, and going out was always just people just wasted drunk you know there was no sort of fine um taste really like with with it didn't matter what kind of beer you drunk or you just got a bottle of vodka and you got wasted it wasn't like how does the vodka taste you know there was never there was never any sort of fine tuning i think with, with it was all very sort of rough i think and uh and then in the 90s uh when i was in my 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 teens uh it was uh very rough time for the pharaohs. It sort of uh, collapsed, the economy collapsed, and a lot of people um, lost their jobs and moved away from the Faroe Islands. And I was, my family got affected too. So we moved to, to Denmark and I was 17 at that time. And for me, it just seemed like an upgrade. You know, I could, I could go to, uh, to a town in Denmark and go to a music school and that kind of thing. And I was in a band at that time, and we were really, we were a really popular band on the Faroe Islands uh, that we were playing in these sports halls. Uh, but we were sort of insisting on playing our own music, our own songs. But but people were were really wasted, you know. And and we 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 played um, usually we play like three sets, you know. We start we do one set at eleven to twelve, and then we wait a bit, and then another one, and then people start coming around three, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, awesome. it was really bizarre and and i think that that part of sort of upbringing and me learning to play music uh in my room and learning beatles songs in courts and all these recording that I, I was i was that kid who, who i got really disappointed because there was this build-up inside of me like ah oh, there must be more like this can't be it you know this is not what i'm hearing in the on the records you know and so I, I I was kind of, I was ready to go away and I and I felt bitter and I was kind of still am in a in a sad way I I still thinking that the music in the Far Islands is the same way but it's not like now there's venues and people love music and I mean when uh, we came like for your wedding yeah to me it felt like all the cliches that you know about Wales everybody sings like everybody can sing everybody's yeah, yeah. like <laughs> yeah your parents your friends everybody's always singing and then it yeah. felt like everybody like our age is kind of in a grindcore metal band but also <laughs> has this like lovely beautiful yeah, yeah. Uh, you know like ambient uh nice music going yeah, i thought that was the, really special the thing is that that i, I would say that that uh People are extremely musical because you, you must imagine that since there was no entertainment, no, uh, I mean, we, we had a television when I was small and that was a re like really revolution, you know, like we, and there was one channel uh, that was on Mondays and uh, Friday, as <laughs> yes, they think there was, you know, and uh, so, so if you just go back a hundred years or so, all of the entertainment and music is, is self-made. So uh, and you, people sang a lot. 
you know, for their kids when, and, and when you get together, there's this really big tradition of singing. Uh, and uh, there's probably more more uh, choirs per capita <laughs> in the pharaohs than than I would say in most places. So people really love to sing, and they're great at it. Like it's, it really is. It's different if you hear uh, if you go to a yeah a party or a wedding and you hear people sing. It's it's really everyone sings in key and unison and uh, and is used to singing. You can tell, and that's not uh, the normal thing. If you see if you go to uh, to a football stadium <laughs> anywhere, but it's actually really beautiful, uh, very musical <clears throat> people. So I think um, I grew up also with playing, um, you know, when people sing in, the, in, in parties and so on, I was always that guy who was, who was accompanying, you know, who was playing, uh, play the guitar or piano. And I would, that's how I, that's how I came into music really is to learn how to play the songs that people sing. And that's why I, I became interested in songwriting. It's how, t- how you accompany how do the chords move? What happens when you do that? And what happens if you start playing it at this key instead of that key? And, and all those things, I started to learn that language and became really good at that. But that was sort of my, my natural go-to place was to just accompany people when they sang. When uh, I just loved doing that. And, and my dad had the, this organ. Uh, my dad was also, is also musical. And my mom was also a great singer. So we always had music in, in the house. But I became obsessed with the songwriting and then when I joined this um, this band um, in uh, yeah before I moved to Denmark, what I, were they I was, called? It was called Mark No Limits. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> the keyboard player, the, the the keyboard player, his name is Mark. So it was okay. kind of his. It was his band, and we were okay. in a. It was actually a workplace band. Uh, he worked. Uh, well, two guys they worked in this this shop together where you you, know, you sell pencils and paper and that kind of thing. Yeah, and they and they had a storage, and th- that's where they they set up some gear and they used to play. And then uh, my stepfather, he was working there too, and he's like, "Hey, Tider, you should go and play with these guys to play music." But they were they were way older than me, so the only way I could sort of impress them was was um, was like, "Hey, I made the song today," and, you know, and they could play much better than me. But but I, I immediately w- took the role of of the songwriter and uh, and just always was writing songs. So that's why we also had. Had like forty songs, and we could play. We could play these uh, these halls, you know, the sport sports halls in the weekends, with our own material, because we just we just wrote a lot of music. But that did sort you of sing? Also, like, did you sing right away? I did, uh, but that sort of came later because uh, I I never thought I was really singing. And there was this other singer that we got the singer, we got this girl singer, who who would sing the songs, but it gradually just became me and her singing and. Uh, and yeah, but I was sort of the lead singer at the end. But it was also just for practical reasons because it's like, hey, we got the song; it goes like this, and we don't, you know, we don't have time. So it was also just sort of that thing. I'll just sing it, and and um, I I never really um, imagined that I would do that. But then when I moved to Denmark, that was sort of the, the, the breakup. You know, I would go so often to the weekends to the Pharaohs to play for a bit. Which um, uh, um, takes how long by ferry? Just like so, people can imagine. Uh, it's it's a uh, thirty six hours on the ferry if you take the boat, but but if you take the plane, it's it's like two hours. But you have to go to Copenhagen first, and it's a bit of a trek, you know. Yeah. But um, I would do that often. I would go home and and play. Um, this is me when I'm seventeen, you know. So just doing those those kinds of shows, going back and da da, and then. I, I became sort of resentful and bitter at at, at, the, <laughs> at, at the at yeah at the music business situation in the Faroe <laughs> Islands. So this was my rebellion, and that's why I'm still, I think, making music. It's because uh, out because of spite, would, yeah, out of spite, yeah, I'm gonna show those motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have a problem with that. Okay, okay, uh, speak your mind. But I yeah. mean, how did you? Like because in the end, or not in the end, but in between, you ended up um, basically traveling around the world or living in different locations, doing a lot yeah. of songwriting with other people. Right? How yeah. did that come about? Well, that sort of happened uh, during my my school years in 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 Denmark. This is uh, like a suburban town in Denmark that's kind of big. That has the the biggest uh, music school in Denmark. So that's where I was, and I was in gymnasium. And at the same time, I was um, doing 
I guess what is preparation prep school for for um, conservatory. So yeah. it's it's something that the music schools in Denmark they offer. You can go if you have uh, ambitions to go into a conservatory. You can go and do this uh, training to 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 basically to you train to get accepted into conservatory. Basically, when you go yeah. and do the test, you know all the you learn to read and da 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 all the necessary things. So I did that too while I was in 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 school, and then when I was finished in in the gymnasium, uh, I guess college is called or gymnasium. Yeah. Uh, at that time, I uh, I sort of made a plan. It's like, okay, I really want to make music, and I I mean, I would always make music. I come home from school and I make music. You know, I, like it was I, I it was pretty a, a simple. Uh, yeah, um, I've met you. Equation. <laughs> yeah, right. It was just like, yeah, that's all I wanted to do. And so, so the end of it is became clear. Like, okay, I I, I should I should be doing this, and I want to be doing this uh, forever. So, what should I do? Like, oh, how should I spend my time? So I. So I basically gave myself five years. You know, I said, I can do this for five years and make music. But that it's important that I actually make music. Like I shouldn't be learn how to make cappuccinos or, or, or to make deliveries, but I actually want to spend my time making music. And that's what I did. So I, I got a job where I worked. Um, it's only two days per week. So I, 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 I got paid... Um, like three, four hundred euros per month. You know, that's all I had. Yeah. And then I was just really nerding it out and just writing songs in my apartment. And uh, and I started to go go to these uh, songwriter things nights. You know, where 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 all the songwriters go and play each other's songs and cry together. You know, like that kind yes. of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I so I did totally did that. Uh, and um, and then there I met some some other songwriters. And then I got invited to play in a festival. In, in, um, in Denmark, which was like a showcase thing, like uh, it's called Spot Festival. It's mm-hmm. it's um, you know, it's for new talents where managers, booking agents, da da, they go to check out new things. And I got invited to one of those songwriter things there, and that's where really everything started for me. Uh, where I met my, I'm still my manager today. We we worked together for more than 20 years now. And, Your and manager lo- Christian, who um, yeah is a dog dad to six huskies, right? Uh, now there's actually only two left. There was oh nine. Uh, but they all sort of just been going yeah, gradually now. Oh, no. Now, he's, uh, yeah, now he has two dogs, but famously he had nine huskies, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And he lives in the UK. Yeah. And, um, so, so when I met him, it sort of, it became next level for me because he was, uh, he was at the time working in BMI in London. And he was running the the BMI offices there, so in he invited publishing me. Or in, um, yeah, it, uh, um, BMI is sort of the is it called Stema in Germany? Or St- oh, no, Gema. A uh, Gema, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gema, Stem, Gema, Enzbe, Koda in Denmark. Okay, it's also called yeah. ASCAP in in the, in the US. There's BMI and ASCAP, but he was working for them, so he was into the whole songwriting, publishing thing, right? And he was in, in started inviting me to go to um, to uh, London to write with him, and also this other guy Jeff Cohen, whom I still writing with. I've written many of my songs together with Jeff. I also met him in the same week in uh, in uh, in Denmark, and I sort of you know I chose them, or they became my my team, or as it were. And there was other um, also the same weekend um, was uh, a friend of mine, Nick Woodbridge, who I wrote with, and a guy called Jamie Hartman, who still. He's um, he's written actually he's got loads of like number ones right now. He wrote that song for uh, what's it called? Human. I'm on a human. Oh After yeah. All. He wrote that one and just loads of other songs. And we were all uh, all there in the same week. It was really sort of a magical thing, and we all got really inspired from from, from being on that trip. And, and you that were really, like 18, 19 at the time. I think at the time probably you no know, more like twenty, twenty I think, or mm. nineteen twenty or so. Yeah. And and then uh, I I started to no wait I was it was in ninety nine so I was twenty two okay twenty two yeah uh, and then I started going to to um, to um, London and to New York to write with uh, with them and it's also like very classic tie to her like I I I got my tickets got paid from a, a ship broker uh, he heard <laughs> oh, yeah. me. Yeah, I was at home in the Faroe Islands uh, one, you know, Easter holiday, Christmas something, and I was on the radio because I was I was well known for my band there, da da. 
So, so I was on the radio and, and talking to, um, to this guy. And then I got a telephone call from the this, this, this ship broker. I said, hey, man, I heard you on the radio. I think you're great. <laughs> Uh, when you go and uh, and make these trips to to uh, to write music, I want you to call me first, and then I will pay your tickets. That's and awesome! He, and he did that. So I I went to New York and London. You uh, had a patron. And, uh, I had a patron. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and I made my my three hundred four hundred euros uh, for my pasta. You know, so I, that was all. <laughs> I, that was all I needed. And then I st- I would stay I stayed at home with Jeff you know when I was uh, in in New York and the, and I stayed at home with Christian my manager and my friend Nick uh, we just, so it was kind of, and it was just when that sort of easy jet um, all that stuff was happening so it was kind of okay to fly to London it, it seemed all right and then uh, I did that for for a couple of years just writing with with sort of my managers and and Jeff's uh, folks. And then I got um, offered a publishing deal like a couple of years after that. And then I got signed in the States by, in, in this, uh, this publisher uh, called Windswept. And that sort of was a big game changer for me. You know, then, then my, my career really started, I feel like. But up until then, it was very much just, it was songwriting. You know, it's always, and it still was, even after I got signed with the publisher, it was still going out to write more for everybody. And, were uh, you and ever just, like were you ever scared being so young and being like put in a room to write a song? Did you ever cramp up or oh you know God, get no. blocked or no? Oh God, no! I was just totally brash and just like, oh yeah, I I know how to do everything. You know, I was I was just that guy. You know, I I just thought it was super fun. And, but I I think I I think what's sort of lucky is that I uh, I mean I I was definitely became uh, very hipster and very sort of opinionated and you know me I am very opinionated and so on but in in the, in in that situation I was really like in it for I'm, I I knew I was learning stuff like I I was totally okay with writing a crappy song and calling it a great day like it was fine and I knew that most of the songs we would write in this awkward situation would probably be crap or some of them might be good you know I but I I was okay with just like I'm learning stuff how do how does this person do it and And that's that's kind of how I looked at it. And in the end of it, I I realized, whoa, I actually I actually we made some great things. Uh, but I was very sort of open, I think, to just learn. And I, I got Oops. the uh, the sort of, I got the sort of idea from my my friend who was a photographer, who said that when he had a camera a roll a film roll, there was uh, 36 pictures in it, and if he got one picture that was great. He was happy as a photographer. That was fine. Like taking 36 pictures and having one great one was fine. And that was kind of my same approach to songwriting. It's like, yeah, I'll just write hundreds of songs and then, and then I'll have a couple of good ones. You know, that was kind of my, my philosophy. So I, it felt super unprecious to me, actually. It was just like, yeah, it's just songs. And then gradually it became uh, more of, a, of a, an, an oriented thing of, what, uh, wait, what do I want to write? And what, 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 what is songs? And why do I want to sing this? Do I, do I want to go out and sing about that? Or... Like what, what? Where am I? You know that that started later, but in the beginning, I was yes to everything, and I was writing, um, yeah, with with so many people. But I I definitely was uh, not into making records. Like I was like, I'm not making records, and I hate playing in bands. You know, it was all oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was it was just me getting my stuff together as a songwriter, and and I was you know you're so arrogant when you're. You're young. I was convinced that I was, you know, I I would be the best songwriter in the universe. I but you just pictured like, yeah, yourself, yeah. like you pictured <laughs> yourself on stages, right? Singing them. Or did you like feel like you would be somebody who would always write for other people? I think both, you know, I thought, I think, uh, I think both. I had it a little bit as a side project, I think. But I think I realized early on that in order to do make music and to get ahead and to always have a firm base, I need to learn how to become a great songwriter. Like I knew I can play stuff. I can sing. I, I love music. I can make music. That part's easy. Uh, and, and being on a stage, it's like, I can do that, all those things. Okay. But what I really need to master is the songwriting thing, because that is what is inside of everything. That's what you take with. And that's what you can actually generate money. Also, that's what, that's the real sort of heritage is, 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 is that part. And and I, I I realized that really early on. And, that's and, fantastic and because of, you know there's so many like um, 
I think there's so many people who start out who care about the songs the least. <laughs> yeah, you know, big time, big time. And that kind of catches up with you. Big time. And I'm also uh, wondering, like, because, I mean, I think I've never met anybody who's as, you know, like loose and easy with music and songwriting as you are. You know, like oh, it seems it seems so natural with you. And I'm wondering whether um, like you had that from the get go or whether that was probably your training. Mm, Those sessions, know. you know, did that like yeah, did you learn I think, that there? I think um I mean I think I just enjoy it, you know. I think it's really fun. And uh and uh, yeah, it's probably because I just done it so many times. And um I, I guess so, but I, I just I think I'm just really into it you know like i get super excited by it and uh it's uh, it's a really freaky thing i think to i i sometimes think that it's it's so so silly you can walk on the street and you have a problem about how how to solve a chord progression like it's really it's a really crazy thing to actually go around and do but it's actually what i really really love like to me it, it makes sense to 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 make music you know i think i just because i think it just helps me to be who i am or something It's so I enjoy it. I don't find it frustrating to make music. It's 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 super fun. I mean, it's 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 frustrating sometimes. You know, getting your your computer, or your Mac to to work out, or if you're writing a complicated score or something. There's definitely things that are frustrating. But but it, um, like at at its very core, I just think it's it's. I become a dog. You know, you throw a bone, and it's just it's like it's. <laughs> like, it, Yeah, it's um, instinctively enjoyable, I think. I think that's really interesting because, um, I mean, this is going to make you blush, but I'm going to say it anyways. I think you are one of the very few people I've met that I would call a genius to their face. Oh, come so on, no. <laughs> you'll, just, you'll just have to live with that, and I'm just going to nah. keep talking. But the thing is, <laughs> like, I'm wondering because, I mean, this is – a podcast for creative people. And one right. thing that I think is really interesting about you is that I know a lot of people who are gifted and who have always been mm -hmm. in music and stuff comes easy to them. And they're like natural, like great natural singers. And um, mm -hmm. they can like, like you do, they read music and they can like arrange string quartets in their head. But mm -hmm. a lot of those people seem to have problems finding their own thing because they can do anything mm -hmm. yeah. i think for mm -hmm. for a lot of people who are like that it's even more difficult because they don't have the the yeah, limitations yeah. right yeah. so you don't mm -hmm. really find what mm -hmm. is yours mm -hmm. and it seems to me that you've never had that like how do you think it happened that you still among all the things that you can be doing or could be mm -hmm. doing you always know you kind of always know what to do mm, yeah well i i think it's uh it's also a choice it's it's something i've chosen like to do um i think it's uh, maybe a mixture of, of 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 a couple of things but there was definitely a conscious choice like in that the time uh, after being finished with school it's like okay i really really want i, I like it but just really want it you know i really i, I want to make music Yeah, I, I, um, I tried working, yeah, going to work, and um, and coming back and getting paid, and it was always like really nah. like, and I realized I could, I if if I could just go out and play two shows, uh, I can um, I can pay for my pasta, you know, like it was always always that. So I think. Um, I think I've sort of made a a, 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 a plan, you know, like a, a master plan or some sort of like an end game. And, and, and that is become a songwriter, be a good songwriter and, uh, and start in the right place, like make records where you can evolve. And, and I waited for a really, really long time to make record, to become an artist. And like, I, it wasn't, I didn't say, I said, I said no, uh, just as much as I said yes to the creative thing. I was always very sort of conscious that, okay, I need to to do this right if I want to have a career, and I and I did see a lot of people going for the the, the quick moves and, and getting their that record deal and writing the song so it could be a comma hit so they can get better numbers and like and I was always sort of wary of just like okay just 
I, I, and I still kind of have that foolish belief that I'll, I'll peak that when I am 60, you know, like I, I'm still sort of, I'm still like getting my way around. Like, I'm, but, but, but I think I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm happy with, with doing that. But do you yeah. ever like, um, did you ever have to like within the songwriting or within the music thing, mm -hmm. did you have to make choices Because I remember like when we talked, I think two years ago, you were a little bit torn, like whether you wanted to stay in that songwritery lane or yeah. like pursue that more like new classical thing. Yeah. And there's so many things that you can do even within the music. Like how did you find your oh, yeah. voice? You know, your because you have a very strong like um, artistic signature. And I think that's harder to develop for people who can like sing sing anything they want to like how did you decide that you were not going to be i don't know that guy yeah i think uh, yeah i mean i do struggle with those sorts of things that what do you want to do what is what is fun and the writing with others me and the orchestral things and um but i think it it always comes it always circles around the songs you know for me it's it's always the idea is the acceptance is that Okay, if if I'm going to make uh, music, I I I better be in the center. Like I've I've chosen that. Okay, I'm I'm in the center of it because no one else is going to do it, uh, and I'm sort of forcing myself to be the artist, to be the performer. And in some ways, I think I am, but I also think like I I also am an artist. Like I want I create things and I see things and I want and I want to do them. So I have this drive to to um, to make things. Um, and and I think the song the songwriting is so strong because in within that storytelling thing you have all this room where you can actually make all those roles you know you can I find it sort of endless how you can accompany a song how you can how you can tell a story uh, and 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 to me that's always is is interesting and, and enough pl place to play in where I can use all of these things that I would like to do. I sort of feel um, that I can incorporate everything since it's songwriting. Uh, and I don't think I could do that if, if trombone was my main thing or, 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 or singing, you know, I, I think, uh, I think the songwriting is a sort of a very good gathering point where I can, can be many things. I can be an artist. I can be a singer. I can be a, a producer, arranger. I can, I can sort of make it, make all those sides come together. And I think my my identity as a songwriter or artist is is just that. It's because I've sort of chosen to to keep it centered around that thing. And I waited for a really long time to make sort of the the start. And I I I write a lot of things that I don't put out. Like I always try to, but I. But I, but I see, I have this vision of what, what I want to hear and what, how I want my music to be. So it's always sort of, it comes into that pile and, and the rest just goes away. I think that's uh, really interesting because um, like one thing I would tell every aspiring songwriter that comes to me is mm -hmm. allow yourself to write as many shitty songs as you can. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. people are so protective <laughs> yeah. of their like early work that they yeah. kind of cramp up and don't really get anything done. And I think that's really important to, on the one hand, I don't know, just keep writing songs. But on yeah. the other hand, you have the, I don't know, like an issue of urgency, which I think helps decide sure. what to pursue, which is also really interesting. You know, like how do you sure. know when something is really strong? Like how do you know it in your body? Yeah. I think it takes, it, th it takes a lot of soul searching, I think. Um, and, and to me, uh, to sort of learn how to navigate between those things is super important when you, when you're creative is, is, uh, because that exact thing you, ex you, you described with you, when you start out, maybe you make some songs and then you become really precious about them. But often what is actually happening is that, um, I think I've learned this from, from trying to, you know, finishing so many songs per day when I was traveling and. It, it was so you had to just finish the song and get it done. But that sort of preciousness is it's often um it's often just you getting to know stuff. It's yeah. it's 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 often because you maybe are insecure, you don't feel you're talented enough. So when you finally 
found something great. You're like, oh my God, I did this. Oh, thank God I pressed record on my iPhone. Now I just have to listen to the thing 20 times and then I can learn how to do what I just did. And then it's a song. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so you, you start practicing whatever just came out of you that time. And you, and you, 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 and you think of that as a song. It's really hard to, to step away from that and say, oh, what is this made of? What, what is this, what does this do? Uh, what, why am I want, why do I want to sing that? Can I say that better? Well, how does it start? How does it end? It's, it's really, that's what songwriting is all about. I think is to, to be able to navigate between those things and to see, okay, what am I, when am I, when am I playing? When am I the musician? When am I the explorer? And when am I the creator? When do I invent tennis? And when do I play tennis? You know? And, and, and it's, it's, it's really all about that. I think it's, that's the, 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 at the very core is to navigate like what, when I'm, when I'm creating something, what, what is, um, is it really just my own insecurities? You know, am I, am I going to a big, uh, getting to know myself, uh, uh, evening or, or am I writing material music to play? You know what I mean? It's it, it, often, it's just that it's just a uh, gefühl, you know, it's just, you're just feeling it and you, you, you feel lucky to be creative. But, but I think when you, when you make songs, you, you have to, you have to bring uh, some, some, um, some, something more to the table. It's not just yeah. all gefühl. It's, it's also a craft. Yeah, I think and, and that's the, interesting, right? Because you get to a point where it's about how closely you are identified with the song, which mm -hmm. I think is really important for people who start out to know. It's like, on the one mm -hmm. hand, you have to be so deeply personal mm -hmm. about your songwriting and you like bear your soul and it's really deep. Yeah. But on the mm -hmm. other hand, you have to be like kind of, you have to be able to step back yeah. a little bit and see it for what it is and what it could be to other people. Or I don't, I don't know. There has to be like a little you want, bit of. Yeah. You want to communicate, you know, you, or else it's just you uh, in an identity crisis, you know, like I, <laughs> I, I, I think, I think it's really all about, it's all about that. You know, is it, what is behind it? Is it, is it you saying, everyone look at me, I'm doing a beautiful thing. Or is it, everybody look at me, I'm really sad. Or is it, every, you know what I mean? It's or like, what is the, what is the drive of you making that song? I think that's, perfectly cool question to ask like what do you want with this like what what's the what's the what's the what's the purpose here and then make it better you know improve it uh, and um i i think that it's uh yeah i've had i think i've had a lot of like soul searching or realizing that oh this is just a selfish thing like i'm now i'm just being selfish or now i'm just whining or now i'm just learning to learning something on guitar that i don't know or now i'm just uh, doing therapy trying to Yeah, and I'm I'm trying to figure out how stuff is recorded. You know, like when you, like, trying to know when you're writing the song and when you're getting to know things, is it's 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 crucial, I think, and 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 to to sort of see it, see it with bird's eye view. And, and okay, now it's a song that we got to move, not my my tendency to to like this sound or whatever. You know, but that's not the song. And 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 I also think that a lot of writers they get. The, you get um, what happens in this room, you know, say you're, you're with somebody that you maybe you, you like them, but you, you don't want to wear the same clothes. You don't want to listen to the same music as they do. You, you're not the same. You wouldn't be doing it. You're not best friends, but you're writing a song together. And then it's, it's uh, like 80% of the whole drama, drama, emotional drama in that room is basically genres it's like oh i don't like that like you know it, you go into arrangement mode immediately it's that's how true. you say it. and it, and 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 that's also to me like the great songwriters they know how to how to steer away from that and say wait that can be done a million times uh, 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 million, million ways you know it's and it's trying to de decipher when is it a performance and when is it a a song and and that and like that i think that's also something that 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 um, I have uh, been just in those situations so much that I could see it much better to, to, to not get involved in the, oh, what is this person? And, and uh, oh, I don't really like your shoes, you know, or like, I, like that, that stuff should, should not get in the way of the song because the song can be so many things and it can, it's just a matter of, like, don't get, um, don't make the presentation fool you. And, and I really often also felt when I've written, written a great song, 
But the way we recorded it was not in some some way. And therefore, that person is like, oh, I didn't, didn't never like that song. Because they can only sort of hear the the, the arrangement or the, the, the vibe of the recording. You know what I mean? That's, a, that, that's also something that's really hard to navigate in, I think, is to differentiate the per, sort of performance aspect or the recording of something and trying to find in what's the, the actual bones of this this material that we are trying to make in this room. I just had a thought that like for people listening who have no idea how those sessions work, maybe we should right. maybe we should describe what kind of a like that's a job. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. there's people who do nothing but that. Like they meet up in like those songwriting camps or they get yeah. thrown together. They've never met each other, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe you can describe those scenes like Nashville or you know how that works. Yeah, I, that's what the sort of, sort of thing I did when I I was started with my publisher and, and just throwing me to these things. And and it's basically you meet with someone and you have a day to write a song. In Nashville, it's often two songs per day. You start at one in the morning and one in the afternoon and you just get together and you finish uh, ideas that you have brought often. Sometimes you start fresh um, and you finish the song together. And sometimes um, it's just about getting a better uh, catalog yourself. You're improving uh, your songs. Sometimes you're writing for yourself. Sometimes you're writing for someone else. Some more, sometimes you're just writing for fun. Mostly, to, I think you're just writing to see if something nice happens, you know, if it's, if it's a cool song. And then there's all, there's different styles, you know, in Nashville, there's one way to do it. You want to get, get the songs recorded by country artists and, and in New York it's different. And, but I, I've always sort of been, been um, an artist too, you know, so it's always been, yeah, are we are really writing this for me. Or if I'm writing with someone else, like, are we writing this for you? There's always that sort of, who's this for? But I'm always thinking, hey, this is about writing a great song. You know, I, I, I really, if it's a great song, I'll be happy to sing it. And, and if I like it, you know, or like uh, we did, we just make like a German and an English version. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like sure. That. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that it's, uh, it, it really varies on the, the thing, or if you're writing with an artist, then you write for their project and, and then you, um, yeah, I mean, I'm always completely, uh, You know, musical genres, that's like, it's so uninteresting to me. It's it's uh, it's like I'm into food, you know, I like food and people who only deal with carrots are just missing out, you know, like it's, <laughs> I, I don't understand why you only, uh, like, like, like what I'm trying to say is that I, I feel like I can write many different styles of music. Like I, it's just music. It's not a style. And if if I'm writing only one style of music, then I get bored. Then it's like, Hey, what what we're doing now is actually just imitating something that you have heard, listened to too much, you know. Like, and 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 I think that's not musical. Like, I then I sort of get, but but that definitely is also a, a situation where you're in a room and then people are trying to emulate uh, a style or something that's cool and hip, and then you do that and you snort coat cocaine and and belt out uh, the hook lights, you know. But I was never, I was never into that whole thing. But but that's definitely also a part of the scene is you you get together and you 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 want to create a big hit song and then all of the melodies they're like that because it's got to yeah. be really strong. And, I mean you know, I've I've done and, very <laughs> few I, I've done like I've done I think you were the first person that I really wrote with a lot like we did mm -hmm. and since then I've done that a couple times and I yeah. mean, it's really <laughs> it's really different the speed of I don't, it. You know, it's yeah, like it's the, super fast. Yeah, yeah, it's like the, it, people just keep belting out something, and it's like, okay, that's the chorus. We're all yeah. set. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I think uh, Grandpa's too old now. Like, I, I don't <laughs> like. I like. I like doing it if it's with people I know that I like. But I get really bored if I can. If I can sense that it's it's about imitating something else, and it's about insecurity and getting successful and so then i'm like i'm bored You're out yeah. Uh, uh yeah i would i would rather l write an obscure thing for for uh you know the, yeah yeah i feel you but i think it, i i still think it's like really astounding how much you have managed to preserve and hone your own thing and i think that maybe the secret to why you have kept like such a distinct sound 
for yourself is that it's based on very like timeless songwriting principles. Do you know what I mean? Mm, it's like yeah, maybe, all yeah. those, all your songs, if you strip them down, are like that. They're like very yeah. None it's of the, it, they're not depending on the arrangement. They're not depending on the music. Yeah. Side. They're like very classical. Like, yeah, it's the it's the, it's the stuff that I learned from when I was a kid. You know, the Pharaohs, you know, the accompanying this. It's the um, the campfire song tradition. Yeah. And, but that's kind of where I'm I'm from. You know, that it's 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 that songs that people sing and why why do people sing them? It's 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 that has always been at the core of uh, of my my school. You know, and that's still uh, how how uh, how it is. And uh, and and then and then struggling. To uh, how do well, how do I want them to sound when I sing them, and 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 how do I accompany that story with sound? You know, like I, it's it's, it's, it's that's still sort of where, where I'm at. But but you're right at the very core, it's very old, uh, like oil painting <laughs> art. It's very <laughs> very old, boring and old, uncool. Uh, but 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 that's not but what help- I said. <laughs> But 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 uh, but I, I think uh, I honestly think that that um, it's I'm sort of I feel like okay I'm sacrificing some things by sticking to some very old things or whatever. But I I think in the long run it works. Like and and I when I make my albums I always try to make them make it timeless. Like I and I get sort of turned on by that 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 it shouldn't be what's uh what's the correct thing or whatever but i really want it i want to put it on in 15 years and go like whoa that sounds cool but that's that's an interesting thing i mean i'm just assuming that we'll have like young songwriters listening and i think that's really important because Mm -hmm. i think um even also with language not only with the music it's kind Mm -hmm. of important that you i mean if you want to use words that are very much of their time you should at Mm -hmm. least know that's always one mm-hmm. thing that kind of puts me off if you have too many. Like, we can't really talk about that because all the words I can think of are in German. But, like, if uh-huh. you want to use words that are, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> a slang thing that yeah, might yeah. be gone next year, I would never yeah. do that, you know? Because you yeah. kind of, you know that you've just destroyed something that could have been timeless, <laughs> you know? Yeah, sure. Yeah, but I but I, I think I also imagine myself at my own shows. Like, like I would hate myself so much if I made a song about a sandwich. You know, like if I had to sing, <laughs> if I had to sing about a sandwich every night, I would kill myself. You know, like I, I better better <laughs> sing something that I I, I want to go up and sing every night. Yeah, and uh, and also like there's this fear. Like, what if I if I have this huge ass hit about something that I don't like? You know, like what what happens with that? It, you know, it would be your you know short people. You know that Randy Newman is oh, really unhappy with short me. people because it's. There we are. Say I was what? gone for a second. You know that yeah. Randy Randy Newman always says that he's really really unhappy that he wrote uh, short people uh-huh. because it was meant <laughs> to be like a little novelty thing, and now it's yeah. like what everybody yeah. keeps screaming for. Yeah, I totally <laughs> see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that totally happens. <laughs> but I, that, I, no. you go. No, no, I just remember that there's also that funny, is it Randy Newman um, or Lyle Lovett or somebody they were talking about? I think it was it Lyle Lovett talking about Randy Newman or Randy Newman talking about Lyle, Lyle Lovett about how they liked the music. And he says, yes, I like both of his songs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, and I think that's also something really true. I mean, like now I've written hundreds of songs, but it's actually still... <laughs> It's just, you know, my my thing anyway. It's just it's still once or two songs, you know. That yeah. is the whole work. And yeah, I mean you keep that. everybody I think or a lot of people keep getting back to things that they are sometimes I think as a songwriter you're also like um like a scientist or somebody who like goes into an abyss with a lamp on their forehead, you know? Sure. And, like one expedition you find one thing, but then you need to go back and you find something else and Yeah. But it's kind of still the same, ex- <laughs> you know, the same yeah. thing you're doing, the same thing you're trying to find. Yeah, sure. I've written a lot of songs that I think are siblings, at least. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I used to also uh, acknowledge that when I was much younger, to uh, that it's okay to write the same song in different ways, you know, about the same subject. 
uh, I, I sort of encourage to do that. Like, it's fine if I have a, something I really want to say, it's, it's, it's cool to write seven different versions of it. And then you sort of find what's the best way to say it. And why do I want to say it? And, 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 and then you can, but often I think by accident, you maybe have uh, how you, that that same song becomes two different musical ideas that you like, and then you sort of perform it or you try to put it on one this record and then one that also <laughs> happens sometimes, you know. You're, yeah. But they become, but they but they often uh, they come in batches. I feel like they they are 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 related in in times, and then yeah. sometimes you 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 take old ones, uh, new ones in. I think I'm just gonna take some coffee. That's allowed, right? Yeah, sure. It's one of those. Uh, Nescafe, Nespresso things. So these, uh, I think they're really bad for the environment. These pods, you know. Oh yeah, just I like, know. Oh. But I'm staying with this. Uh, th- you met him at, at our wedding, I think. This wine guy. Oh yeah, sure. He was at my table. Yeah, he. Uh, I'm staying in his uh, Copenhagen it's, it's crazy swanky place, like wow. a penthouse apartment here. It's really amazing. Say hi. Yeah, I was super lucky. I was just talking to him when I was looking for places. He's like, hey, come and stay. And stay here. How long are you staying so, for? Uh, ten days. Cool. Two shows in ten days. Wow. I have to. Okay. Yeah, you cannot really go back and forth unless you have to, right? And no, and also the planes are so not so frequent. So. Yeah. Um, um, I want to dive a little bit into songwriting a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, sure. And, yeah, yeah, um, go. Also, like... Um, the right mindset and also kind of life set life setting that you need to be mm-hmm. creative and things that you've learned and can sure. share. But the first thing um, that I absolutely want to talk about because it's you is um, I've had the same discussion with a lot of people about whether humor belongs in music. And uh-huh. I think it kind <laughs> of divides people you know, like mm-hmm. a lot of people think, sure. no, it, it, music's not supposed to be huh. funny. And I think <laughs> you kind of, you absolutely nail it. And you're always, or not always, but a lot of the time you're like on that very mm-hmm. narrow, you know, straight and narrow sure. little edge of where something is still moving and has a lot sure. of heart. But it's also yeah. really funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, uh, I want you basically to give people permission to be funny and yes how? well <laughs> and how well i think um i don't know how that actually really works i think it's um i think it's also comes in if you're presenting something that is often serious or sad you you, you accompany it with humor to make it easier to digest i think it's it's something to do with that i think uh, and it's um, the realization that you can't, for two hours, uh, be so serious or be so sad or angry or you know it's it's something to do with that that I I maybe just have a personal difficulty with like I I can't uh, like go John Malkovich and just be in character for for uh, for like a day like uh, I, I I sort of I'm, I'm putting myself out there and then I think it's um, it's a way to sort of also say, ah, it's not a big deal, you know, ha ha. And it's the way it's, I'm trying to excuse myself uh, while presenting things. I think, I think that's maybe what is at the very core of it. I'm not sure. Mm, but I also just want to make things that, that make me laugh. You know, that I want stuff to be funny. Like I, I, uh, I, like I can, I can get giggles if I hear a sound that I think it's funny or a combination of instruments that is, is funny when they're playing. Like that stuff makes me laugh. And I think it's a very honorable thing. Like I think uh, making things pretty is honorable and making things funny is, uh, is honorable. And I, I think, I think that it's part of it, you know, um, but some music sure can be serious, but I'd, I, I think I'm, I am like so extremely serious about some things that I sort of need to have uh, balance it off or, or to run away from it or, or to, to get a reality check or something. I think that's why, why humor is important to my music, but, but I think it's different from people, people to people. Like I, I, I remember I had a really, really, really hard time to differentiate, you know, if I would, if, when I was touring a lot in the States, when I was much younger, I, when I did my first record, I was playing every day for 
years, you know, I, I would go up, to, I played up to 250 shows per year. It was kind wow. of crazy. Yeah. And I was on the, on the road with all these people. And then there was this one guy I was playing with who I was always really annoyed because he's like, he's a stand-up comedian. He's not a musician. Like his songs <laughs> are crap. Like, can I write your songs? But, 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 but uh, everybody loved it. And the show was great. And he was actually um, telling jokes in between songs. And it was like, Horrible amazing. penis jokes and <laughs> and and amazing uh, scenarios. Like it, it was really just a mixture of. Uh, but he had a guitar and he sang them. So <laughs> so so there so there was a period where I was sort of, that's not cool, you know. Like I I I, I don't want to do that and 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 um, I I, w I don't want to talk in between. I, I had this face also. Where I didn't really want to talk in between songs, and I was also very shy. I, I I'd sing with my eyes closed a lot, and so I I didn't want to want to be funny and if, if if people laughed but i think also people started laughing at my shows because uh, i'm awkward you know like I'll, I'll i'll say something really stupid by accident <laughs> and then people just laugh like did he just say that and 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 then uh, it was sort of a love and hate thing for my thing and um but i think now that i'm older i just sort of uh it's part of the, the thing is that it, it can be funny it's okay it's honorable to make people laugh it's okay And also it gives a good backdrop <laughs> for the heartbreak, I think. You know, I, I think it's... Sure. Um, I love artists who can handle both because it makes the sure. heartbreak really, like, break your heart. Because yeah. one minute you're laughing and then it takes a turn and you're like, Bleh. I love that. I mean, yeah. music can be yeah. like... A, it, it can be like a Trojan horse, you know? You get people sure. all relaxed and laughy and then you, like, twist the yeah. knife. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're giving but I, people I, permission. But I always, ha I've always had this, uh, this. Uh, I mean, maybe it's another subject, but I've, I've also felt that there's this. Uh, you know, you must honor the music. You know that you, 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 you shouldn't use music to promote your, your other thing that you want to do. Like I always felt like, hey, wait a minute, or Madonna's not actually a musician, or you were like a purist. Know, like I, Yeah, I, I, and I always was strugg struggling with with that sort of thing. It's like when, um, yeah, with humor and 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 being on stage and 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 um, and I still sort of um, have difficulty navigating with that because I always ask the question like, why is this person doing this? Like, why are you, you why are you standing there right now? Like, why are you singing me this song? Like that to me is always always the that question. Or even if you go to to places or like what. What is what are they really trying to do in this uh, in this establishment? What's what's the desire and and will behind stuff? I th and I think that as soon as you're clear about that, then it's okay if if someone is is either funny or angry or you know, like it, it's it's all about wanting to understand. I think the person who's there. Yeah, I think that's really important because a lot of people, or it takes a lot of people some time to figure out that it's okay to have. I don't know objectives straight objectives as an artist because a lot of people think mm -hmm. everybody everything just needs to be like loosey-goosey free and you just follow your mm -hmm. you know you like just follow the muse but sure um i think um sometimes that's maybe what separates people who actually make a career out of their music or who, who just stick with it is that you also have like the ability to step back and be like what is it I want to do or what is it that I want to be? And sure. just be clear about motive, you know? Sure. And I think that yeah, applies think to like, it, it applies to your career, but it also applies to a single mm. song. Like sure. that's something that you can ask people who are writing a song and it's not really working. You're like, but yeah, but what is it that you want it to be? Are you clear about what you want this song to do? I think, right? I think that's I think that lies at the very core of being a composer. It's it's the it's the the desire and want to get people successfully going from A to B as successfully as possible. And it's it's like uh, giving directions. You know, if if someone asks you where is the, the store, you can do that. A good composer can do that in a can give you one line that you will remember and that will take you to that place. Or if you're a bad composer, you confuse that person and they'll go the wrong way and they'll fall and it'll be terrible. But I think that that's at the very core is, is when you are a composer, you, you have 
uh, a desire to just be clear and communicate things uh, clearly so that everyone goes there successfully when they reach bar 180. It, how do you make it sound the best with all of these people doing it together? And, 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 and for that, you need clarity. You need Absolutely. to have a sense. You need to have a, a, a purpose. You need to have a destination. Like it's better if you can tell the musicians like this is what this is about and, and, and this is what, what needs to happen in this music or if there is a sense of direction because all that other stuff, the playing, the being, the, the, the artist, all, all that stuff is in there too. Like you'll do that naturally when you walk to the grocery store. Like if you're an artist, you are that, you're that. But you need to, to, you need to know uh, if you're walking to the grocery store or not. I think if you're just doing it, then it becomes an empty thing. Yeah. I think I think um I think when we make art it's it's um it's both of those things I think it's uh, it has a substance too you need to have a, a sense of direction and a meaning a place to go to when you make art and then you also need to be able to just listen and follow it's a very you know it's yeah. kind of like a very delicate dance between yeah. I think the conscious mind and the unconscious yep it's 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 definitely It's 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 the, all of those things together. Um, mm -hmm. And I just <laughs> I just have to ask because you said that and it might be useful for a lot of people. You are slash you were very shy, right? As a kid, yeah, big time, yeah, and yeah. Uh, like a long time into your adulthood, and you're still an introvert. I would say, like, um, mm -hmm. kind of um, the definition probably of an introvert in a way. Mm -hmm. And because I get asked that a lot, like now on my Patreon, people ask me mm -hmm. about those kinds of things. Like, how do I deal uh -huh. with um, uh -huh. showing so much of me? How do I deal with yeah. an audience mm -hmm. and that kind of thing? Yeah. So maybe can you, because I know, like I've never met anybody who is so in tune with their own, you know, factory settings. I think you mm -hmm. are very clear about Mm -hmm. um, how you are configured <laughs> and how you need yeah, to yeah. deal how you need to deal with it how how you need to i think you've really worked on that right on being yeah, yeah, for sure. outgoing or on being oh yeah big time connecting and that kind of, how did you do it and what did you need to do well i think it's um yeah it's it's necessary you know to 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 be sort of uh outwards but I think it's um, it's because I, when I'm speaking musical language, when I make music, I don't feel shy at all. No. Like then, mm -hmm. then I I feel I feel great, and and I think the the closing my eyes stuff is very much also because I'm listening so hard to what it sounds like and, and to feeling it at that way. Um, and then I sort of hate being uh, in a room <laughs> with a lot of people, but it's absolutely necessary. Uh, for me to do that, and the only way I could do that is is if I if I'm in charge or something. Like if if uh, if I make the music and everybody's listening, then it's actually a fine situation for me because then I'm in control and it's it's okay. But if I'm in a in a in a birthday party, it's just uh, noisy and uh, it's something. Uh, it's some sort of a spectrum thing, probably. <laughs> I don't know, um, but I've uh, I think I've. I've been lucky because when I was in my in those twenties, when I was touring a lot, it was just that I had a very simple purpose. You know, it was like getting in a car, going to a place, playing a show, and da -da -da, and making records. Like it was all very simple. And it, I think it's changed. It's changed a lot now that I have a family and so on. Where I realized how actually uh, on my own I am because I've always just been allowed to just be an artist to just do what I do and make all my my calls and uh, and I think. Uh, that the sort of the shyness part is, um, I don't know. I think, I don't, I mean, I don't really do go out to mingle or what. I don't do that thing at all. Like I don't go, if I get invited to award shows and say, I, I almost, I never go because it's just, I don't really like it. And then I just have my group of friends that I like, for instance, with you, I, we got a relationship. So I like, okay, I want to do everything in the world for you that, you know, like I, and, and, and that's kind of how, how I always been, you know, like I, I, I'm cool with, with some people and then some people I'm not cool with. And then, and I just stay away from all the things that I don't want to do. Um, but I think that's, I think 
when you're an artist, I think that that's that's why you are an artist. It's 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 so that you can control that one thing, uh, uh, so so that you're not insane, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so it just allows me to to have a place where I can do something meaningful, and uh, and uh, and become so good at it that I can do it so that it's better than if I if I am, um, you know, clean clean cars. I could do a better job. You know what I mean? Like I can do better for society yeah. by doing, by doing that. It's the best I can do every day is to become better at that stuff. And it's also, I think a way to communicate when you're communicating something uh, in musical language, so there's something very abstract. Then you can say all these things that are too complicated that you can't say in, in your house when you're, you know, with, with your family or whatever. It's, it's it's also that yeah. you create this the space where you can um, uh, give meaning to where you can put put logic and put things you can put this cup here in music and that one over there and it's like it's it's your yeah. it's your perfect world and I think it's it's maybe that's a part of it it's just um, insane people like me who uh, who find uh, peace uh, with doing something like that in order so they can actually seem normal to other people or something I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but also you can make stuff visible for for everybody. I mean, you have a unique perspective and you I think it's just it's really special how you can go places where words alone cannot go in music. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's I mean, poetry, poetry kind of can because mm -hmm. it also allows for, mm -hmm. you know, the vibrations in between the words. Yeah. But I mean, music is just perfect for that. You yeah. can make stuff mm -hmm. not visible, but mm -hmm. yeah, tactile, and yeah. you can show stuff that is there in a way that nobody else mm -hmm. can. Kind of. But uh, but do you feel that your your shyness has ever made touring and everything difficult? Like, did you have to learn to deal mm. with that? Because I know on stage you're really you're fine, basically. Yeah, right? it's all that. Switching. It's all the other stuff that's hard for me. You know, like it's. Uh, It could, it's much more intense for me to check into a, a hotel than the, than it is to go on stage and play. Like a, it, it does that sort of stuff is more uh, takes more energy, I think, to to do those kinds of things. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yet, I mean, yet you tour like a madman. I mean, still, right? Yeah. I mean, you tour a lot less now, but your touring yeah. always involves going to Copenhagen first. Yeah then going some other place yeah. mm -hmm. it's i mean it's crazy the way you travel mm -hmm. you, right you have this very very isolated yeah small kind of island islander life yeah. <laughs> going on and then you have like the craziest traveling salesman <laughs> life that yeah the, the medicine man show <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> i think that's really interesting that somebody you know who takes like you do yeah but i think i i think I, i i enjoy it so much i think to play music and to make music and it's necessary that i travel to make it like i all of my work is outside of the pharaohs so i have to go to places and i want to share it yeah uh, i think wanting to share what you do is also sort of a primal primal thing that you have to have as an artist you want to 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 share it you want it to 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 communicate it If I was just doing it in my own room and not going out, it wouldn't be um, be the same. The, it's yeah. it's. Uh, I think that's really interesting because a lot of people think that, and of course that kind of plays into it. But a lot of people who don't perform kind of think that it's uh, an ego thing. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of people who are like kind of suspicious mm -hmm. about the arts would think that it's like you want to show yourself, mm -hmm. but. Um, I think the Americans kind of have it right with that need to shine or they have uh -huh. the word glee uh -huh. that we don't like in German, we don't have uh -huh. that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's like the joy of performing, but also sharing at uh -huh. the same time. Sure. And I think that's really important mm -hmm. that you just want to, it's basically about connection and sharing and being seen, but also allowing other people To feel seen. Yeah, I think it's it's a really magical thing. Yeah, right? I think it's a mixture of all those things. It's also selfishness, you know, wanting to 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 yeah. be seen and to to feel uh, that what you're doing is good, yeah. acknowledgement a lot. I think that's also part of it for sure. Uh, and uh, also just to listen to this thing that I am hearing. Can you hear it too? You know, 
That yes. that that thing is 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 very pure and and honest, I think. And I think most musicians that I know, they ha- they 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 like that. You know, they they that's what you. Hey, look! I found this thing, guys. Listen to this. You know that, and 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 that's I think an honorable thing too to do. But it's it's definitely also to to feel acknowledged and um, and it's selfish. Yeah, uh, it's sure. uh, it's just the small person that wants to to go out and, and be seen. But uh, yeah, but sure. I think when once you are, are in music and once you understand music, once you once you feel it when you're in it, you just really like to be in it and you want people to see it and and um it's uh, it's it's a natural thing to want to go out and share yeah. you can't you can't keep beauty away you know you have to show it absolutely mm. well what, one last thing that i thought was really interesting and i'll think of all the other things once we've hung up and then we have to do it again <laughs> sure. in like a year but one important thing because i think it's something that could be really inspiring for other people is that I think you thrive off of change Mm -hmm. a lot Mm -hmm. and you're kind of driven by learning. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really interesting thing. Like Mm -hmm. for people who want to do this a long time Mm -hmm. is kind of that you get new enthusiasm and new drive from learning something new. And I've seen you, like you bought New equipment at Schneider's Laden when you were in <laughs> well, Berlin, so expen- so right? So expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just spiraled into this like learning frenzy. Yeah. And a whole new record came out of that. Yeah. And then you do things like you do, you did Juliet Letters, mm-hmm. right? Which is, um, was more like a classical score mm-hmm. thing with a theme, with a subject, mm-hmm. right? Or confessions with Nico Muley, and yeah. like maybe just talk about that aspect of doing new things. Yeah, well, I think that there's that um, there's a wonderful um, sense of discovery when you when you do some new things. Like, like once you learn a new language, you can communicate with it, and and um, I think if your motivation is to tell a story, then you can sort of use any sort of uh, medium that you find. And in that process, in the beginning, you know, in the relationship, when you, when you meet, when you fall in love, there is, there is um, that magical thing that happens that goes away when, when after a long marriage. And all, all, but you know what I mean? Like that, 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 that mystery of when you just start something, uh, that has a, got a really powerful energy. And, and I think that when you are doing that, uh, you, you, um, you can create really strong things. Because you become like that 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 poker player when you when, when you learn someone to play poker the first time they usually win the first five games because because okay. they they go crazy and they think they can win and they gamble insanely but when you know something really well then you become more reserved and and then but then of course you can become a poker master but 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 uh, the the beginner poker player does the, takes crazy chances. Um, but I think that's sort of a good energy if you're doing creative things. If if I throw myself um, over something and I learn the language of it, then I can, if, if my motivation is to tell a story, to share something, then I can get go through it. And then in, in that process, I discover things and, and things are magical. And, oh, this is a kiss and this is a, 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 a date, you know, and this is, a, the, you know, you see the whole future. All of these things pass when you're learning the great possibilities of, say, an instrument or, or, or something. Like, I think, I think it's, it's a really good thing to do. And then you can move on with something else. And, 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 and in that way, you also acquire new skills you know you you become better at seeing the bigger picture if you have if you have spent a long time with something if you're if you're all about say rhythms whatever if you spent if you spend four years really getting into that it's a great investment like you will learn you will yeah, learn sure. loads and you will make choices like it's 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 good to have uh, have have these kinds of um things that you can't do that you're trying to struggle with. And, and, and I, I enjoy that. I enjoy, I enjoy figuring things out um, like gear or how stuff works or, but I think it's, it's part of the creative process. But I also feel like 
the, the most important thing of creativity or when you write something, when you make something, it's the start. It's, it's where the, the flower comes out and it's where most things happen. Also, like when a kid is from, from zero to two years old, like that's where really the world is, is yeah. doubled a million times. And it, you, yeah. you become, you, there, there's so much energy in that start there. And I think that that's a great mm, tool when you create to, uh, to sort of treat it as, as such a thing. Or to create new beginnings, yeah. right? To like start something where you yourself can be new. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I think like, I mean, I've just started doing my like autobiographical writing. Yeah. And it's just so much fun yeah. because I'm new at yeah. it and I'm figuring things out and every, you yeah. know, it's very complex and then stuff plays off of each other in a way that was unexpected yeah. and it's really fun. And I'm sure it'll play back, you know, it'll like trigger some songwriting sure. that'll be different from what I did before, For sure. you know, it, everything like feeds into everything and that energy of doing new things is just For great. sure. Yeah. Well, I think I let you go because I have. I, I'll show you my cards. Have I shown you my cards? Wait. This is how I prepared. Oh you wow! See that? <laughs> that looks nice. And I, I think I haven't really looked at them, but I think. I mean, let let me look mm -hmm. at them. I think we've talked about almost everything that I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think um, still we'll have to do it again. Because you'll keep doing crazy new stuff that yeah, we, we can, can talk about. We can always talk. Yeah. We can always talk. What's next for you? Well, You're going home and staying home or? Well, no, I've got, I've got five drive-in shows now that I'm doing. And, um, yeah. and then my booking agent also called this morning. He says that the gigs are just coming in now. So many gigs are coming in now because they're just opening up now in Denmark more. Oh, okay. So, okay. So we were kind of thinking about maybe if I should get ready to have a summer in Denmark almost. Okay. Wow. Um, I don't know. I'm going to talk to, to my wife about that. See if, if we, because she is finished working in, uh, in about two weeks or so. So maybe we should okay. come on down this way or I can do lots of shows, I think, but it's also, it's the summer of love. It's the, it's the anything can happen summer. Uh, yes. So, so uh, I think it, we're just going to wait and see. But I'm I'm finishing some some stuff. I I am I'm putting out um, uh, a guitar. My guitar quartet is finally coming out now. That's the next thing. Cool. It's a guitar quartet, and then uh, there's a like a small ensemble piece uh, that uh, uh, called ringtones about ringtones. And also, that's also yeah. something I I I think is really fun to write ringtones. So I I wrote. Yeah, and you, you've also written, like, because people probably don't know, you've written uh, music for jogging. Yes, running music. With a friend. Yes, running, running music. music. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's one of those obscure, obscure <laughs> things that, that is coming out. And then I'm uh, working on uh, these recordings that I did in Argentina. Uh, that mm -hmm. I, I made some recordings in November. I uh, was there for two weeks and recorded just a bunch of songs with Argentinian musicians that I met. And, Great. and so that I'm editing that now and, and, and getting that together and I'm making lots of videos for that too. Um, I started doing a lot of videos. <laughs> That's also something I think is really fun. <laughs> and then I got an iPad pro, which mm. is really a big mistake because now I've started to draw a lot also. So I'll be, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just, it's just the same, same stuff as always just, uh, yeah, <laughs> different name. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, I hope we can visit each other yeah, soon-ish. Yes. Soon Maybe we can come by to, uh, to Berlin and say hi. Yeah, that would be so cool. Yeah. And I've been thinking we need to come by for G Festival. Oh, yes. Point, and then maybe like once everything's possible again, yeah. we should come take the kids to G Festival and then maybe be so great. take you guys and go to Iceland. Yes, that would be so good. You know, yeah. that would be so Yeah, good. great idea. Well, Love that. Well, we need our post corona fantasies. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. We do. That's a great idea. Well, I'm going to turn this off and then we can properly say okay. goodbye. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you secret things about my dog. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll just 
But we haven't gotten yeah. around to that. Yeah. So we're going to say bye bye now. Okay. And talk talk about my dog in secret. Bye bye. So that was my chat with Taitua, one of my favorite people in the whole world. And if you shouldn't be acquainted with his work, you should go listen to it and actually buy it for money. He has a lot of records out and they're all great. If you want to have a closer look at what Taitua and I wrote together... You could check out my second solo album. It's called Ich bin das Chaos. And Taito and me co-wrote eight of those songs together, even though they are in German. So check that out. And also I will put up a blog post on my Patreon about my time in the Pharaohs with him and about our friendship. And speaking of Patreon, if you aren't a patron yet, you might want to come over and check it out. It's www.patreon.com slash Judith Holofernes, which is me. And it's amazing there. We have so much fun. And I take good care of my patrons. And yeah, I make extra episodes for them. It's a lot of fun. Come over if that's your cup of tea. Bye-bye.